All right, good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Nick Cotabo. Uh, some of you I've met in the past, and it's a pleasure to see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd. So, uh, like Jeff said, thanks for coming here today. Um, so I'm here to talk to you guys today about laser rangefinders. And, um, you know, a little bit, I wanted to start off also with uh, my background, just so you can kind of know, like, from where I'm coming from a lot of times. So, uh, my background's actually uh, not originally in ballistics. It's in laser beam propagation through the atmosphere. Now, that sounds totally strange compared to the topics that we're not normally used to talking about here. But uh, how this all got started goes back to when uh, I was directly out of college. And actually, it's kind of funny. Brian didn't mention today uh, what he did directly out of college. But Brian went to the Air Force and then was doing a lot of air-to-air -air missile modeling and developing ballistic solutions for um, you know, shooting down the aircraft with uh, miss heat seeking missiles. Well, it was kind of funny because I got out of college and he went to Penn State and I went to Bucknell, which were really close, we were both from Pennsylvania, so kind of a lot of commonality there. But I went to go work for Lockheed Martin after I got out of college. And my first job was defeating the missiles that Brian was trying to get uh, to the aircraft by jamming them with lasers. And so it was kind of funny that uh, both of us had our career at start. In, in laser based, or I'm sorry, in missile based systems. Uh, but after that, so I got really good at like jamming missiles, right? So that sounds like an interesting thing. But the next big thing we, we worked on at Lockheed was being able to communicate very long distances uh, using very high data rates for you know aircraft to aircraft, or aircraft to ground stations. You can imagine if you have like a U 2 fly plane and you're trying to get data, you know, ISR data off of an aircraft and uh, you need to do it in real time. Something like a laser-based system would be really cool uh, to do that with. So that's the kind of stuff we're working on. Well, after that kind of program got uh, kicked off and, and we got it to a demonstrational standpoint, uh, there was another program that came up out of DARPA. It was called OneShot. Now, if you guys go Google this, you can find a bunch of information on it. Uh, but the primary purpose of the OneShot system was to optically measure the wind. So you can shine a laser on a target, look at the return of that laser, and actually analyze what the wind is. And similar to what we talked about earlier in the day during some of the wind presentations, we can utilize the effects of the mirage on the laser to understand what the average crosswind is between you and the target. That's the kind of stuff I work on on a daily basis. Um, and you can see the original one-shot system in the bottom left-hand corner. It was absolutely massive. Uh, and I will never forget the one time when we were testing it, I was with a gentleman from the U.S. SOCOP, and he intentionally made me carry the system around Todd Hognett's wind clap course um, with a BA-5590 battery. And I'm not a little guy, but I'll tell you, carrying that thing for about you know, two or three hours got to be a, a pretty tedious task. So since that time frame, we've worked on miniaturizing the system and things of that nature. So and just kind of interesting background. And, uh, you know, probably about uh, six years ago now, uh, teamed up with Brian and the Applied Ballistics crew. And since then, my team at Advisti is the name of the company, uh, really acts as sort of the engineering arm for Applied Ballistics. And so we do a lot of the products you're familiar with, like uh, a lot of the software and electronics that are inside of the Kestrel, uh, the Kilo 2400, the, uh, almost all the apps that are running and things like that, on the, whether it's AV Analytics or it's the phone apps or things like that. We get involved with a lot of the uh, software and hardware in each one of those systems. So if something's not working, you know who to come talk to or beat up, right? So that's, uh, that's a little bit about our background here. But today I'm here to talk about why or what laser rangefinders are. And